What is going on guys, Vlad here with solosplc.com and today I wanted to make a video on PLC troubleshooting. So the reality is in most jobs that you're going to get as a PLC programmer, PLC engineer or PLC technician, you're going to be spending a lot of time troubleshooting different errors on PLCs, you're going to be encountering things after certain changes are made, you're going to be encountering when uh, certain processes are executed or there's downtime on different lines. So it's a very important skill to have and what I wanted to do is essentially demonstrate the process from A to Z that I would normally take in order to figure out a problem. And this problem was actually encountered by me over the last couple of days at a site that I visited right before the New Year's Eve. So what we're going to be doing is simulating a similar error and I'm actually going to be putting together a very small program for the PLC that illustrates that error so you could try this on your own before I reveal and dive into the solution and into the steps and you can see if you've gotten exactly uh, you know the same solution that I've gotten or you've found a different way but regardless of that what we're going to be doing like I said, we're going to be using a RS Logics 500 PLC. So that's going to be the MicroLogix that I have sitting in this box right here. We're going to be downloading this program to the PLC. And then we're going to be essentially walking through the steps needed to tr troubleshoot the problem. And I'm going to be showing you and sharing some tips and tricks that I would normally uh, use to solve that problem. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. All right, so before we dive into the code, I just wanted to quickly show you where you can download the same program so that you can practice at your own pace. So if you go to github.com slash vromanov89 slash solusplc underscore development, you will find the following page along with every single program that I use for my tutorials. So here you'll find the L24ER QB1B processor program and you're also going to find this Solus PLC underscore MicroLogix 1100 underscore FLT1.RSS file. If you click on this file you'll notice that although you can't see the ladder logic due to limitations of GitHub you can still download the file by clicking this little button and then saving this file on your P PC and then you can launch it in RS Logix 500 run it on an emulator and be able to figure out the same steps that I'm going to be doing here that being said I'm going to move in the PLC program so this is a fairly basic PLC program and I want, what I want you to keep in mind is that in a real production scenario you would have you know maybe hundreds if not thousands of rungs therefore the problem is essentially to also figure out where the problem lies and not just to um, essentially look at these four rungs and immediately know where that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this PLC into run mode and we're going to see what happens. So we do have this long uh, integer being added once so essentially it's being incremented by one and then we have this move instruction now on the timer side just so we're clear on those steps every 100 milliseconds because of this time base and this preset we're going to be incrementing by one and let's see what happens once this uh, once this move instruction reaches a certain number which is going to be 32768 for the long int and 32767 for the regular integer. Now some of you may already know what the problem is but I want to show you once again the steps that I take to figure out these problems. So typically I would be called either on site or I would be able to log into such a PLC remotely and a lot of the times like I said there's going to be thousands of rungs so my first attempt is going to be to just reset the PLC maybe there's some kind of a problem a fault that occurred you know sporadically that we don't necessarily uh, have a recurrence of so what I can do is I can clear fault here and I'm going to press yes and then I can put the PLC back into run in order to of course you want to minimize the downtime of production so you're trying to get this figured out as soon as possible as you as you've noticed the PLC faulted out immediately so we have to take the next step which is going to be to actually look at what the fault description is so I click that arrow once again and I can go to error and this status window is going to give me a little bit more information 
on what the nature of that error is. So here we have a major error halt S113. We have a math overflow trap S50. Next, we have a major error S620H. And we have a minor minor error bit is set at the end of the scan referred to S5 minor error bits. Now, what gives it away for me, and once again, I've seen this a couple of times, but the math overflow trap essentially indicates that something has overflown what the uh, what the capacity of a certain register is. But typically, I would start by Googling this major error fault. And let's go back into our web browser. So here, I'm going to just open a new tab. And typically, I would type in Rockwell because this is a Rockwell PLC, Rockwell Major Fault 20 age. And so what you will typically find is different so first of all, you're going to find different forums where people have encountered a similar problem. And once again, this is a separate forum. You can go to solusplc.com. There's also a forum there. But ultimately, people are going to be asking about similar faults that have encountered this and figured out the solutions to these specific faults. And I highly recommend that you get invested in some of these communities because a lot of the users are going to encounter errors that even the developers or the manufacturers of PLC are not aware of. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that people are going to give different suggestions on things to try, on things to try and implement to figure out a solution for this error. But there's also going to be shares of the Rockwell automation articles that are referring to that specific error. And that uh, Rockwell automation article is actually locked into Tech Connect. So I'm not going to be going there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and you'll notice that there's going to be different, uh, different videos. There's going to be some literature that you can start looking at. And this is essentially a critical step in troubleshooting your specific faults. So here I can just do control F and I can see if I can find that specific error. And if I can't find it, then I'm going to try and use different different keywords that may mean something similar. So I'm going to try and, for example, look up overflow. And you'll notice that there's going to be an arithmetic overflow occurred in an instruction fixed program by examining arithmetic operation and adjusting values. So that gives us a little bit of a hint, but not really. Let's see if we can find something in RS Logics 500 that might be similar. So I'm going to Google, uh, sorry, I'm going to control F and then see if I can find this uh, 20H error. And you'll notice that there's going to be some examples of what may happen specifically. So there's going to be executed for error 020.h, but there's no specified uh, target node a respondent host has a problem. That's definitely not what we've seen. There's going to be a different fault description for this specific program. Let's see, indicate there's a minor error occurred in your latter program, minor error bits. Uh, referred to major error. So you'll notice that this is a major error, which is not necessarily what we have. So what we need to figure out is what's the other error that we've got. So we also got this math overflow trap S5 slash zero. Let's see if we can find that. So I'm just going to type that in math overflow trap. Math overflow, I guess there's no trap keyword. So overflow trap bit S50 minor error bit is set upon detection of a mathematical overflow or division by zero. So we do not have a division by zero, that's certain, but we do have a mathematical overflow, which is how you essentially figure out what happened. And you can read a little bit more about this specific register, which is going to give you more, uh, more information on the nature of the fault. And it says in applications where a math overflow or divide by zero occurs, you can avoid a CPU fault by using an unlatch instruction with address S50 in your program. The rug must be between the overflow point and the end or the ref statement. So this is a very, very interesting uh, comment because what we can do here to fig to solve this issue in order to not fault out the PLC as they indicate in that section is we can add a, let's see here, I'm just going to go back into my rug. So I'm going to insert this wrong and after the fault, I'm going to, to do an OTL. Let's see here, change instruction type, OT, OTU, sorry, OTU. And I'm going to put that in, 
Let's see if we can clear this. So that looks good. Let's see if we can clear fault. Okay. And we can run the PLC. Now, what you'll notice is that although we've cleared, we've essentially bypassed the default, we haven't necessarily solved our issue. So what's happening here is that the double integer is still being incremented, but the integer, which is the N70, is still not counting, it's just stuck there. Now let's look at it really quickly at the data structure. So I'm going to close this off. We figured out where the fault is, but we haven't figured out a solution. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this long and I'm going to open this integer. So what you'll notice in the L90 long integer is that it's going to be composed of 32 bits. So from 0 to 31, that's going to be 32 bits. Whereas this N70 data structure is going to be composed of only 16 bits. And we've talked about data structures a little bit in the previous video. But what's happening is that as this double integer passes information that is greater than what's able to be stored in the integer, the PLC is throwing a minor fault. And that's to be expected. Essentially, we're overflowing the information that's capable of being passed there. But one of the easiest solutions, of course, is if we edit this rung, and instead of passing this information, whatever that needed to be, into this N70, we can pass it into the next into the next long integer. So of course, if we do this, then let's see here, we compile everything, that's going to be flowing as expected. Now, there's going to be a lot of or different solutions that you can do. This is the, the easiest and kind of a no brainer solution since you're passing from one data structure to the other, then it becomes really easy. You can also create like traps, you can create mask uh, instructions in order to pass, you know, half the integer, for example, you can do something simple, like, as I said, if it's uh, less than so let's just change this. If this n zero is less than 32,700, for example, just so we don't get all the way up to that, then you can move it into this n was it n seven zero. So if this is less than 32767, then you can move. Otherwise, you don't execute the move or you do something else. So this could be, you know, another solution to the same problem. Let's see here. And we have the overflow trap already. What we can do is, let's say, set this to 32,000. And we can actually delete this. It's another way to prevent that specific error, but ultimately it's not solving our problem necessarily. Like I said, you can implement some kind of a mask. You can implement some kind of a different way to pass your information to wherever it's going to. But ultimately we figured out how to keep the PLC running. It's back to normal condition and it's able to execute the instruction as you would expect. So these are just some of the steps that I normally take. Like I said, Google is really your friend. It's highly underestimated. You can find a lot of information by simply searching the error and then following some of the steps that are going to be posted on forums such as solusplc.com, uh, forums like the Q&A, the PLC Q&A that we've looked at before and of course the data sheets of the original manufacturers and some of their uh, other tools where you can find the problems that have already been encountered by others. Now I wanted to really point out that if you get something like this during an interview process, what I typically look at is not necessarily the final solution, but how does the person approach this specific problem? So they can tell me and they can talk to me about, you know, the different timers, what's really going on in the program. And of course, I'm going to be adding some more runs to that question. But ultimately, is, is that a problem that they would feel comfortable solving? What kind of steps do they take? Do they actually go online to research the problem? Do they start, you know, resetting the PLC and then deleting rungs for no reason whatsoever? So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you encounter something like this, where the person is asking you how to figure out this problem, that you approach this calmly, you start going through it step by step, and ultimately you end up with maybe not an optimal solution, like I said in this case, but the PLC in a production situation is back and running. Whatever the data flow is, it's not working, but ultimately the PLC is able to run and execute all the other code that's currently running on that specific machine.
Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.